So hello everybody. Hope everybody can hear me properly and can watch my PowerPoint. So hello, my name is Gonzalo. I'm Portuguese. I studied chemistry in Lisbon and I became a self-trained botanist in from 2014 when I created my garden in Lisbon. And more or less during four years, I collected around 500 different species on my square meters um, area garden. So mainly the, what I was focusing on my garden was edible and uh, medicinal herbs, perennial plants, and some native species from Europe. Um, in 2016, I created my blog and it's in Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages. My idea was to show worldwide my work, my recordings, my discoveries, and mainly to create new contacts uh, with people with the same interests as me. Um, it was a really helpful way for me to learn more about botany, about plants, and so I, I, I advise you to give a check. Something in the art is the name of the blog. Um, as well, on that year, I started to record the wildflowers of Portugal, and basically it was when I started to understand uh, the beautiful plants we have uh, in the wild, and I was fascinated with orchids. So basically, um, I, I came to, to Ireland in 2018, um, and as you can imagine, I, I never had again my garden, and I started to focus myself on recording um, European flora, of course, mainly uh, the Irish flora. So 2019 was the year of Epipactis for me. As you can imagine, I never had, was in touch with this genus before. Uh, we have around five different species in Portugal, but I never saw them. And like for four or five months in that year, um, it was the first time for me that I got in touch with different species in Portugal, in Dublin, and um, as well in other uh, European countries. So basically on July of 2019, I went to some places in Southwest of Dublin. Um, those places are typical for habitats of Epipactis species, mainly the Epipactis elaborine. So it's kind of woodlands um, places. And after my first uh, trip, so I was working in the morning, I was doing this after work on my free time. I was spending all my free time trying to record more plants and to, to see them for the first time. And after uh, my first one of the trips I did, uh, I found this Epipactis. And in the end of the day, I posted the photo on Instagram. And uh, after a couple of hours, um, Mike Waller from England, he sent me a message and he told me, no, that's not Epipactis elaborine, that's Epipactis unensis, um, a species never recorded before for Ireland. So I was kind of excited, a bit nervous, a bit afraid. I didn't know how to deal with all of this. But the first thing I did is what I usually do when I'm going to some field trips. And it is when I found one, for sure I will find another one. So on the rest of that week, I went to more places around following the same clues. And in the end of that week, we had much more populations um, of that species. So a big thank you to Mike Waller to highlight me um, about the identification of the photo on Instagram and for all the help. So basically, um, in the end of the, uh, the, that week, I have a bigger number of new plants I found and I contacted Brent Sawyers. So it's a horticulturalist and orchid specialist from National Botanic Gardens uh, of Klesnevin. And uh, we both went to visit one of the locals um, we took photos, we were making some records, we created herbarium specimen, and um, on March last year, we published a scientific paper um, that you can find on my research gate. I will uh, show next to the link. So uh, a big thank you as well for, uh, for Brandon. It was a brilliant uh, help that he gave to me. So the description of the Epipactis, again, I'm super new on this genus, but the main, uh, the main difference from this species from the Epipactis elaborine, because these, these, two, these two ones might be those ones that we can confuse. 
So basically, Epipartis Unensis is autogamous. We have the pollen sac called pollinia, and the pollen will, will crumble and fall onto the stigma. So basically, these species don't need other uh, bugs, other insects to, to pollinate. So by, uh, basically, it's a self-pollinated species. Um, from the other hand, Epipartis elaborin is allogamous, so it, it needs the help of other um, insects to, to be pollinated. Regarding to the locations, so I found eight different micro populations. So this was the total amount I found in the end of 2019. They all occur along the 10 kilometer stretch of the river. Um, and basically the habitat is like woodlands for all of them. Um, before these species were, were just recorded in Britain. So it was supposed to be an endemic species from Britain. Now uh, we have some examples uh, growing in Dublin, in Ireland. Let me check, okay. My main concern in regarding to these species. So these populations occurring in suburban commercial and recreational areas. And this means they are very vulnerable to disturbance by human activity, okay? So that's why we are trying to keep as much secret as possible the places because we never know, like I really want to, to keep watching them uh, every year. Um, last year, I went to some of the places. I didn't add lots of time due to, to, due to the pandemics to, to explore a lot. But some of the sites where I found the, the species were under construction. So I think some of the populations might, uh, might get extinct. I will need more years to return to the places to double check if they will come back again. As you can see on this slide as well, I put the link to the scientific paper. Interesting scientific paper. I, I, I really um, suggest you to give a check. There is a lot more to, to talk about this. And of course, uh, feel free as well to contact me if you find any more populations that you might think can be this species. Last year, I had some, some people uh, contacting me. I didn't have the opportunity to go with, the, with them to the places, but I think uh, they found more populations on the same area, and that's brilliant. So uh, here on this photo, we have Epipactis philantis. So I only, I found, uh, a population with both species together. Again, it was my first time looking to this species as well. It's a rare uh, orchid uh, that we have in Irish flora. So basically one of the, the places I went, I found like three stems of this um, Epipactis philantis as well. Today and tomorrow. So probably the most important slide of all of them conservation and protection of habitats and biodiversity. I think this is important thing, not only for the orchid, but for all our flora. Um, I'm really concerned that we are losing all the time, uh, different species, different habitats. Um, so let's focus on all these things. Uh, monitoring the existing populations through rare plant scheme. I'm, I'm doing that for the Epipactis unensis. I didn't get the best results last year for the reasons I told you before. Um, I want as well to discover more new populations of the of these species. And of course, I, I have more ideas where I can find them. But as well, I think science, we can all do that. So I also uh, can uh, suggest you uh, during your wild uh, field trips to, to give a look if you find something uh, more. I would love as well to record some more new sp species for Ireland. And finally, uh, I want to suggest as well, and you, and you can take my example, uh, to publicize uh, our findings through social media. So I think I'm not asking you to create a blog, but you, create, you can create like an Instagram or Twitter page um, just for these kind of uh, topics. And after your trips, you can uh, just post some pictures. We really love to, to, um, to see them and maybe um, one of them can be like a new a new species for Ireland or new populations about some rare plants that uh, are uncommon in, in our country. 
So that's basically this. I have here the links for everything. On the blog, you have as well all the links uh, plus the ResearchGate link, and you can you can see the the paper. It's it's free. It's public for for everybody to to watch. Thank you so much. I don't know if there is questions. That's all. Thank you. Uh, let me check the questions. I don't see any in Q and A, but I did notice uh, a nice message from Michelin. Chi Skeffington, who says, great find, Gonzalo, just shows you what we can all do. Recording is only the beginning. We need to protect the rare species habitats. That's it. Thank you so much for, yeah, that, that's, I think that's the most important. And again, you can, we can use our free time to go to different places, even on the capital, and we never know. Uh, I hope we will find much more things over there. Um, and all of us, we can we can do it. We don't need lots of experience, just like enthusiasm and ideas. And I think and a bit of luck as well, of course. OK, one last question <clears throat> uh, from Robin Walls across in uh, GB. Uh, Robin asks, how long do you suppose the Epipactis has been there? Uh, well, that's a good question. So I spotted them in 2019. Some of them were very big uh, examples, as you can see on the photos. So I would say they are not recent, some of them, while others are very small. Um, and now I'm thinking those small ones uh, were located on those places under construction last year. So maybe like after some time, they are like taking all the plants and they are growing again. That's maybe probably why they are small, but I have no idea. So we have on my paper as well, we mentioned like this artist called Raymond Pieper from 1976, and he's an artist. And um, on, 19, uh, on 1976, he had like an exhibition um, and he was painting his portraits with different botanical um, Irish orchids, and one some of the paints there was Epipactis dunensis behind. So we have no more information regarding to this. We have just the the, the paints. All of this is, is is on my uh, on the article. So it seems on this time. I don't know if it's exactly the same location, um, but on that time they found as well something very similar to Epipactis dunensis, and um, and I think that's it. Okay, thank you. 